I welcome you all for the wireless communication lecture module. In this session, we are going to discuss about the frequency division multiple access, which is a type of a multiple access techniques for a wireless communication. So before entering into the frequency division multiplexing, first we will discuss about what is multiple access tech. So we have a n number of users. How these users can share a finite amount of a radio spectrum? How these number of users can access the channel at the same time is called as a multiple access techniques. Okay, how the channel has been allocated with the n number of users. That is the concept of a multiple access technique. There are different multiple access techniques which are used for the wireless communication. FDMA, frequency division multiplexes, time division multiplexes, and the code division multiplexes and the space division multiplexes. So there are four different types of multiple access techniques which are used in the wireless communication. In this lecture, we are going to concentrate more about the FTMA that is frequency division multiple access. So in a frequency division multiple access, each individual users are assigned with the individual set of channels. So here each user allocate with the unique frequency band a channel one for example look at the diagram yeah channel one has been allocated with a different set of frequency channel two is allocated with a different set of frequency so each user can be allocated with one channel and that particular channel will operate with a different set of frequency this is the concept of a frequency division multiple access so here the channels are assigned on demand basis so whoever request the service that particular users has been allocated with that particular frequency okay so during the period of call no other user can share the same channel or same set of frequency band so normally fdma uses a fdt system fdt is a nothing but a frequency division duplexing the frequency division duplexing is nothing but it uses different frequency for the uplink and downlink or different frequency for the forward channel transmitting the information and receiving the information so for transmitting as well as receiving information it uses a two different frequency that is called as frequency division duplexing so your FTMA uses a FTT system the futures of FTMA as follows the first is so FDMA channel carries only one phone circuit at a time. It uses a only one phone circuit at a time. So after the call is over, the next person can utilize that particular frequency to make a call. If the FDMA channel is not used, then it's ideal and cannot be used by the other users. That channel will be allocated to that or that frequency is allocated only for that particular user and that any other user cannot be used to that particular frequency so it remains ideal and even it be, it has been wasted if the user is not using that particular frequency so after assignment of the voice channel the base station and the mobile transmit the information simultaneously and continuously so fdma uses a narrow band channels the maximum bandwidth which is allocated for the fdma system is 30 kilohertz so fdma is also mentioned as a narrow band system okay here the simple time is largely compared to the average sp delay spread so this allows there is no at the amount of inter symbol interference which is low so there is no equalization is required in terms of a fdma system as the system is a narrow band system so here there is a no possibility of inter symbol interference so there is a no equalization mechanism is required at the receiving end and the complexity of the fdma system is lower than when compared to the tdma so tdma requires a lot of digital signal processing and the, here that cannot be required in case of fdma system so here the FDMA can transmit the information in a continuously for using that particular frequency. So here we are the synchronization and the framing is not required in terms of FDMA, which is required in the TDMA. So the FDMA system has higher cell site system cost as compared to the TDMA system because we are using a single channel for a single user. Okay, so need usually. Uh, we need to use separate band pass filter to eliminate the suppressed radiation at the base stations. 
and FDMA uses the duplexers at both the transmitting and the receiver entity. This will cost the FDMA system higher than when we are comparing it to the TDMA systems. And similarly, FDMA requires RF filtering to minimize the adjacent channel interference because each channel using a different frequency, you know, one particular frequency should not should not interfere with the adjacent frequency so we you should use a or filtering to minimize the adjacent channel interference and then we are going to discuss about the non-linear effects in the fdma so and normally in the fdma system many channels say the same antenna at the play station so if you are using the more number of user uses the same channel for example if you have a 10 number of users those users will be allocated with the 10 different channels so these 10 different channels will operate at the different frequency band so for 10 different frequency band we cannot use a 10 different antennas at the base station so in a base station we are using a single antenna to transmit the information to the all the n number of users so uh, power amplifiers and power combiners will be used at the antennas are nearer to the base station so these power amplifiers or power combiners com combiners which are used at the antennas or base station this will be operated morely at the nearer to the saturation region or saturation region normally in case of any device which operated near to the non-linear region or not operated with the saturation region that causes the intermodulation effects so this intermodulation is occurs because of the spreading of the frequency okay so this will create a unnecessary interference with the adjacent channel so this effect in fdma is called as a non-linear effect once again i repeat the concept okay so we have a allocated different frequency to the different set of users but in a base station we are using a single antenna to cover all the set of frequencies so to utilize all set of frequencies the base station uses the power amplifiers as well as the power combiners normally these power amplifiers as power combiners will operate near to the saturation region or saturation region so any device which operates in the saturation region you know that will lead uh, for the spreading of the signal due to the spreading of the signal we have a adjacent channel interference these adjacent channel interferences so unwanted effect which is happening in the system so this effect is called as a non-linear effect this happen in the fdma system this has to be avoided in the fdma system so the number of channels ca that can be supported in the fdma system is given as n equal to bt minus 2 into b god divided by b so the bt is the total number of spectral allocation and b card is the god band so the god band is used to avoid the interference between the adjacent channels so for the each in between the each frequencies or each channels we are using a god bands to avoid the interferences okay and bc is the total channel bandwidth so by using this formula we can find out the how many number of channels that can be supported by the fdma systems so for fdma system we will look at the one problem okay uh, look at the problem one if bt is that is total spectrum allocation bt is given as 12.5 megahertz and the god band is 10 kilohertz which can be used by between these two adjacent channels and then bc that is channel bandwidth is 30 kilohertz find the number of channels that has been supported by the FTM system. To find out the number of channels supported by the FTM system is given by the equation n equal to bt minus 2 b god divided by bc. If you are substituting bt 12.5 megahertz, so 12.5 into megahertz, so we are adding 10 power 6 minus 2 into god, it is a 10 kilohertz, so 10 into 10 power 3 divided by bc bc value is 30 kilohertz so 30 into 10 power 3 so if you are substituting this we are summarizing that the n is approximately equal to 416 so the 416 channels can be provided for that particular system in case of if you are using a fdma okay so we have one more example in a us amps 416 channels has been allocated to various cellular operator the channel between them is 30 kilohertz with the god band of 
10 kilohertz calculate the spectrum allocated to the given to each operator so for some simple magnification we are modifying the equation one okay so we need to find out the value of bt that is the total channel which is allocated so bt we are rearranging the equation the above equation you know so n into bc plus 2b card then we can find the value of bt so if you are substituting all the above values n is 416 here and then the bc is 30 kilohertz the channel bandwidth is 30 kilohertz into the guard band is 10 kilohertz so if you are substituting value you know then obviously we are getting 12.5 megahertz this is the band allocated to the each of the channel so this is the example number two so this is about a FDMA system. In the FDMA system, each user has been allocated with the individual frequency. Using that frequency, the user can communicate with the base station or it can communicate with the, some other users. So those particular frequency cannot be used by the other systems. This is all about the FDMA system. Thank you.